Hey guys, it's Tom and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be having a look at the all new LNER Class 43 HST Dovetail Games. Now, the scenario I'm doing isn't one that comes with the pack. I have no admiration at all to do the uh, East Coast Mainline. I can't stand it. Um, it bores the hell out of me. So what we're going to do is, I found a scenario. Um, it's one from Alan Thompson Sim and it's from a chap called I found the name I've got it here it's from cactus uh, 732 so there's a scenario for himself which is one delta 24 and we are going to be doing this scenario and I have actually swapped the HST in so what we're going to do it's only about 25 minute run so it's gonna be a, a straight through drive but it gives us a chance to have a listen um, have a look around and just have a little uh, see what the pack has to offer so um, Basically, what I'll do first, we'll do the uh, the introduction for this now, I'll get rid of the screen. So, after a long sit here in Leeds, and then switch, it's time for the final leg to Harrogate non-stop along the southern portion of the Harrogate loop. Release the doors to allow the staff to complete boarding while you prepare this cab. Okie dokie. Um, just to let you know, the pack itself does come with three uh, career scenarios if you're um, a fan of the East Coast Mainline Peterborough London route. Um, one's 50 minutes and then two of them are 60 minutes in total. Um, it's just not my cup of tea that route, um, so I've gone with uh, the Harrogate loop. Uh, again, it's one of our routes, um, but again, just to have a little play with it and just see um, what's what really. Um, a little bit laggy here, only because it's quite a busy um, area at Leeds, but what we'll do first of all. Let's take a little look at the externals of the train. Um, bearing in mind as well, this is actually a. Um, I've now got the Dovetail Games Live article here, uh, and their first paragraph states that Herald is one of the most important locomotives in British history, the Class 43 or Intercity 125, or simply the HST or High Speed Train, represents a remarkable quest for speed, comfort, and style. It also stands as one of the oldest locomotives in Train Simulator. So obviously back in Kuju days, um, that was one of the original locos that came with the game. Um, so that is 13 years old. Um, and has also been a workhorse on various routes, much like in reality. As it has, of course, it's been backwards and forwards on lots of routes in TS. Um, but now we have an all new HST. So it says here, all new. Now it's it's actually titled on Steam as a remastered, but it's stating all new on the article, um, and it beca it's because it says um, it, it's bringing the incredible detailed model from Train Sim World into Train Simulator. So this is from Train Sim World. That's what it says. Um, so I don't know why they've called it remastered because to me, if it was remastered, it would just be a rework of the Kuju one, but it's the same remastered. So if it's a new, it's not remastered in my eyes. Anyway. I'm going to close that off because I don't need to do any more of that and close that down. I've got my Steam page up just so I can uh, go over that in a minute. Um, basically, let's get a little look into this. So first of all, it looks absolutely lovely in my eyes. Very nice detail. Um, one little niggle to myself is that if you look at the power car, it's it looks really, really nice to detail, isn't it? Might be a little bit on the dark side, but when you look in comparison to the Mark III undercarriage, it's really, really like bright. Um, I mean, I like the weathering on it. The weathering is really nice. It just doesn't seem to match up. It looks very, it looks different. Even the bogies, they just don't seem to match in my eyes. I mean, I, if it was me, I'll probably have had them sort of like all matching up in the same sort of colour, uh, in texture. But never mind. The detail's really nice. Fuel gauge. I wonder if that works. It looks like it's uh, actually got a, a proper needle on there, like the Kuju one. The Kuju one actually worked and told you how much fuel you had on the outside. Um, I highly doubt we can un unscrew the uh, the fuel cap on this one, though. <laughs> but yes, there's some really nice detail there, all the cabling and stuff like that, so it's good to see. Um, Nice detail around the coupling hatch there as well. L lovely weathering. And also it's actually got the little lip here as well. That's new. That wasn't on the old one. And you've got nice detail on the wiper there as well, which is nice. All the cabling, the hoses and stuff like that. That's good. And we go to the sides. You've got the golden spanner on there. Pregnantini and the number. 
Uh, not too sure about the number. I'm just going to grab. I'm not sure I'll leave it for now. I, I, I don't know if that is far too much on the spacing. Well, it's a bit too spaced for me. I think that they're meant to be close together. I'm sure someone will know in the chat and can confirm on that. Um, but yeah, looking good. Fingers crossed that this one, it, we, even though it's got L and R on the branding, hopefully it doesn't come off sale <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Because obviously the, the stuff in the past that's got, gone on with branding stuff, um, it's been on and then gone. So hopefully it doesn't happen with that. You've got the exhaust detail up there as well, which is really nice. Lovely detail on the roof. All the grills and stuff. Really good. Um, now I believe this probably won't be a case of being able to be reskins every single well, it can be, but it just won't look right as every other livery if uh, people start making reskins for this. Um obviously I think it's down to the door, uh, the, the that windows and stuff like that. I don't think they quite match up on all the um different TLCs. But it does look good and there's potential in it. Um I've I've had a little look before. I haven't done a proper full drive just had a little look um, but if we go here there's no um, gangway piping or anything like that there's a gap already it's not even moving there's a gap between the two gangways looks like the old rusty um, coupling there mark for themselves some nice detail on the bows there I've got the old I'm not too keen on that texture on the, the spring that looks a little bit naff um, but overall, other than that, it, the the model on the bogies look really nice. I mean, you can go inside here and see all the pipe work in there. It's really good. Even the details on the braking at the back of it as well, all the brakes. Yeah, overall, again, undercarriage, a little bit um, different in contrast compared to the power car. Uh, moving down, we've got all the different, um, you can see in there the actual passenger views uh, new as well. Looks nice. We'll have a look in the passenger view properly when we uh, get moving. Um, we've got all the detail on the sides here, so you've got all the uh, coach numbers and stuff like that. You've got first class, the, all the detail on the uh, the handle there as well. Windows look quite cool. You can see all like, the uh, the marks and scratches on the window on the glass. That's cool. One thing which is also nice to see on the, a new model of the Mark III is that we don't have blurry um, data panels on the ends. The Train Sim 20XX ones have always been blurry, even with the AP um, enhancement packs, they've never been um, changed. So it's nice to see actual decent resolution ones there, that's good. <coughs> so moving down, again there's another first class car, Coach L, Coach J. So, as well... The livery itself doesn't look quite perfect on these, but it's going to be one of them where someone's going to end up making a proper reskin for these, and I don't think it'll be long before we start seeing different skins flooding into the community. So I'm not too worried on that. Um, it, again, it's just nice to have a, a new HST. It'd be nice to see a new 166, hint, hint, DTG, or a new 47 as well. Just, just saying. If we're going to go in that uh, direction, I mean, there's a lovely class 47 that's in Trainsing World that could maybe uh, see life into uh, TS20 and also a 166. Who knows? Who knows? That's just me hoping. Um, so moving down here, we have Coach F, and you can see the different um, seating in here. So the different seating textures and different type of seating. As so we go into standard. Ooh, wrong way. Up into the sky there. Ignore the lag, don't forget, it's just because we're in Leeds Station, it's quite a busy place. Probably not the best place to start doing this, but we'll get this bit out of the way. So, uh, yeah, overall, the, the modelling and detail on the tops as well, so really nice. There's quite a bit of weathering going on there as well, all speckles and stuff. Don't know if that's maybe a little bit OTT on the roof there, but it looks good. Bits of detail going on, all the um, all the screws and stuff like that on there. It looks quite good. Uh, and so on. So basically, yeah, Coach C, Coach B, and then to the rear power car. Can't actually see. It's weird. You can actually see. That's strange. If you look through the window, you can actually see on this route, you can actually see the uh, the handrails off the lifts going through the side of the train windows. So that's quite odd. If you go inside, obviously you can see them, but there's no 
obviously there's no interior detail on this uh, inside the power car um, luggage area. That's a bit of a shame. Same again there on the um, the rear door here. You can't actually see through this one, but other than the if you go down here, you can actually see through. So that's a bit weird. Again, back power car. So yeah, it's looking really nice so far in terms of um, the modelling on the exterior. Um, what we'll do now is we will go into the cab. We'll have a quick look at the door animations first of all before we go in. So if I to sit myself here. And lo and behold, someone would go and uh, stand in front of me, wouldn't they? Very nice though. Nice detail. A little bit bright, maybe. No lighting either, lit up on the side lights, I can't remember what they call. Um, ODLs or something like that. They? Um, yeah, they've not illuminated. You'd, you'd notice them because it would be orange. Even the old one did that. Let's have a quick look at the passenger view whilst we are here. So that's looking really, really nice. Let's just get rid of that uh, hood. So we've got the leather first class seating. I've never been on the um, LMR ones, but I've seen pictures of them. And they look really, really good. Nice detail. Uh, you're sort of limited to where you can see on this. You can't go all the way around. I don't know if you can move around, actually. Let's have a look. Nope, you are limited to the one seat on this, unfortunately. That would have been a bit of a shame. It could have been nice to sit on the other side as well. Or have a stand-up seating position as well. Um, let's have a look. That's what we got. It's got all the lighting up there. This detail up here, it's got little um, individual um, lights above each seat and table area. Coat hooks as well, that's nice. Actually, it's a detail. The texture is really nice on these uh, leather seats as well. You can actually see the uh, the leather, like the stitching in the leather. It's nice. Not bad quality textures there either. Overall, yeah, it's good. In the in terms of the modelling and the texturing inside here, I like that. All right, let's go to the cab. I'm going to pause it again just while we do this. So first of all, we'll have a little look around the cab itself uh, before we start having a little play about with it. So moving around on the first glimpse, it looks really, really good. It's definitely a new cab, which is good to see. Lots of detail, nice quality textures again. Maybe a little bit bland on the uh, on the dash, on the actual desk uh, textures, but maybe a little bit of weathering would have uh, gone uh, not gone amiss on it. Looks very, uh, it does look very clean. Some scratch marks and stuff. I mean, we've just done the um, class three seven five and three seven seven EP, and that had all them nice scratch marks and stuff all over the desk. Something like that. Would have been nice, but you never know, the community might uh, throw something together in terms of like a, a cabin patch um, over the desk and stuff like that, so you never know. Um, other things that are notable in here, um, you've got the, the CCTV camera, which uh, has been modded into the, uh, the front there, that's nice. I think if we go out, yep, you can see that from the outside as well, and oh. when I say you can see it from the outside, it has actually got a camera lens on it. Now, I've got the ATS um, HST mod pack, um, which is in the subscription pack, uh, and that has the camera modded, and it actually does have a lens on it, so that's a bit of a downfall for the DTG side, where um, that mod on ATS does have the actual camera lens modelled onto it, as a, whether it's a texture or actually modelled in, but you can actually see the lens on the camera, so that's a little bit of a bit of a thumbs down on that bit. If you're going to go to the camera, at least put the camera lens on it. Um, Cabin light. Let's get our cab set up first of all. So, we've got a master key. You can't do shift and W, so you're going to have to click it, I assume. Yep. So. Oh. That was a bit weird. It went from straight on. We can't take the master key back out either. From what I can tell there. Unless it's the key. 
could be on a key bind, I don't know. Basically, we're going to put the um, reverse one went straight into forward rather than like going from off, maybe like in the stages, it just went straight to forward. I think that's a little bit iffy. Um, we've got Andrew West um, there. You've got anything over here? Mm, nope. We need to put our ETH on now. Do we have ETH? It should be on there. Come on. Train supplier. There we go. And it's lit up as well, which is nice. You can hear it powering up there. Right, so GSMR, that doesn't work. That's to be expected. I don't think I've ever seen a DTG product do with GSMR. Uh, right, so we've got desk lights there on. Uh, we want headlights. Oh, that's cool. So I'm assuming that's the that last side. Now it is 8 pm. I'm going to go night lighting. Could be wrong here. But it is late on, so we'll go with that. Right, they're on headlight. What else have we got in here before we get moving? Train supply, that's left. We've got hazard lights. That's cool. What else have we got here? Let's turn them back off. We've got the parking handbrake on and off there. So it's off at the minute. Uh, AWS light there. I don't know what actually that means. Wipers. Intermittent, slow, and fast. Sounds good, that. Right, let's show we get ourselves moving. So nice, nice sounds on the actual um, the brake handle there. As it goes through, you can hear the, the, the mechan mechanicalism in it. When the brakes release, it sounds very coojery. <laughs> Can't really hear an apple. Let's get ourselves moving. So, straight to notch two, apparently. Okay. Idle. Notch two. We're missing notch one. I think. Most certain we're missing a notch one there. So, we're notch three here. Quite quick, even notch like notch two there. It's it's quite quick off the mark. We'll give it a good going in a minute. We aren't actually going to be calling anyway until we get to Harrogate, so we are straight through with this run. Um, as we navigate out of here, we'll have a listen at outside as well in a minute. So we've got driver guard there, buzzer, and that's also activated with C. Good, so that's not our usual. Engine stop button there. It's that one. That's engine start, surely, yep. Okay, horn. There's a very um, notable looping on that. Hmm. Oh no, that one though. That's on the low. It's gone high. No loop on that uh, on the high horn. We move our power up, get ourselves to twenty-five. The sounds on the engine itself are very, uh, I'd say, kuju. Definitely tell there's Kuju in there. It's a good mix, mix and match, I'd say. Speed a bit. Then. That's alright. That brake release is definitely off the old HST. Probably it's been recycled a bit. I don't know. But even then, I don't even think the train scene will have sounded like that. So I'm wondering if they, they can't get train scene will sound into TS. It's like they must have had some better sounds because I'm sure the HST sounded better than this in TSW. I mean, I've not driven it properly for a while, but I'm most certain. It did sound a bit better than that. 
moving on. Let's get it open. And the flange on it, not, not bad either. I'm trying to go for a uh, potential screenshot for a thumbnail. Let's give it a go. Might go further up to be honest, but we'll have a look. Or we'll listen to the flyby. To look at it's really really nice. You can hear a loop as well on the running sounds on the bogies in the passenger view. It'll pick it up properly on the video, but it definitely is. sound on the power um, handle. We have um, a DSD question. I don't think we have a DSD. There's nothing to activate it, and there's nothing of like the E key or anything. I don't know. We're 14 miles to Harrogate as well. And let's go on to the other side. Yeah, about here. So that's the public, uh, public address system. Uh, it's the crew and stuff. Car. Uh, we don't know what we do, we have a sub line that works. There as well to uh, I assume for the signal for the signal. It's quite equipped, I've got to say. There's a lot of stuff that you can actually do in here, really, which is good. I'm not too sure what this bar is all about. It's all like next to the red light. I'm not too sure what that's all about. Another thing I would like to have seen with these is the, uh, the 
a tablet that the drivers have on the left hand side of the cab so that it tells them the details for their route. Now, that would have been nice to have a little, as a little feature. DTG's own branded tablet. It's a shame that's missing. They've got the camera in them. It'd be nice to have the, uh, the tablet as well. Taking off power because it just wants to go. It's a nice place to be in, though. It, it feels nice. I hope, for the sound sake of things, that someone can do something maybe to port over AP stuff or whether AP can do something with this and whether they can make their MTU pack compatible with this. That'd be quite interesting to see. Parental's Grand Hope Tunnel, we're going to be dropping down um, for this couple mile tunnel uh, before um, the version out of the other end to head over Arthington Viaduct. I do like that horn, it, it's very HST ish. I don't think it's 100% perfect, but it definitely has that horn, the, the, the feel to the horn, shall I say. This way, the sounds are a lot. I think the sounds are, even though they're uh, kujui, the sounds are better on this part than they were for the class 89. That just didn't sound right at all. That part. Well, at least this one does have a HST sort of feel to it. Like that they've got sounds in like the, the, the levers and stuff so the brakes so you can you can hear them working where they're going through the different notches. Um, I mean the, the percentages on here. Surely will be step step brakes I think. The brakes themselves seem right they, they seem to be stopping at a decent rate even going down you seem to not be struggling. Well, we're not really going to see what this can do at top speed uh, on this video. We will uh, we'll do another run of this though on a stream at some point. It's not one of these trains I don't think we're not going to pick it up again. I think we'll use this at some point again. No, we just have the one coach, and we can't go into standard class either, sadly. Arthington and then we'll go through uh, Wheaton and then it'll be Penal. Then we'll do the Crimple Curve to the Crimple Viaduct and then comes over that and then it'll be uh, Hornby Park and then on to Harrogate. Those are all our stations that we'll be calling through. Calling through, we're not going to be calling now, we're going to be flying through. At 60 mile an hour, storming. Nice lighting on the stars. Power. 
Well, that's not actually do a 60. <laughs> Good screenshot was off into my adult. That brake release is doing my head in. That is one of the min that is one of my niggles. A horrible release sound. So I'll just go through a couple of bits and pieces of what it says on Steam. So first of all, the pack itself is £11.95, so it ain't that bad at all, to be fair, for a new HST. Um, it's the standard price, really. Um, I wasn't really guessing on prices for this one, to be fair, so it's nice to see. Um, <clears throat> to run the scenarios, you need the East Coast Metal Island and Peter Baruch, because that's where they all run. Uh, it comes with the obviously the class 43 HST, um, the linear livery, with the BR Mark 3 coaches, authentic cab and controls, detailed passengers views, AWS, TPWS, DRA and ETS functionality. Which is, it has DRA, where's the DRA? Oh, it's there. That was. It doesn't say anything about um, DSD. TPWS does that. There's a panel for the TP, it's there, isn't it? Can't do anything with it. It's included apparently. Coupling drawbar. So the coupling works on the front, apparently. Although we're not doing any coupling, so we ain't gonna see that settled in this scenario. Um, again, three quick drive uh, three career scenarios and then a couple of quick drive um, some quick drive consists so it's compatible as well. Uh, so yeah, that's your overview really. Nothing much more to really read on that. Strange, it's like a crossover, it has the MTU sort of sound to it, and then in, when you get it going, it just sounds like the Valenta. It's, it's not one. Just going for Rivington Crossing as well. short HST run on the Harrogate Loop. It's a nice little uh, scenario filler as well when you do it on streams. Again, this scenario is available for Mallet Thompson Sim and it is, um, it's a free part to be quite honest as well. So it runs up from King's Cross, it'll cover all, um, so it'll cover East Coast Mainline Merge and it'll do the Leeds line to, uh, from Doncaster to Leeds. And then uh, my Harrogate Loop route uh, for this last section, so it's nice to see um, all the routes being utilised there on my, uh, my own route as well. Um, so the calling points for this service were um, obviously King's Cross to Harrogate, calling at Stevenage, Grantham, Doncaster, Wakefield, Westgate, Leeds, and Harrogate. miles to go now, we're not too far, so I'm going to go through uh, Pal in a moment, clamp to uh, Crip Curve, over the Vidal and then straight over to Harrogate. Okay, 
in this pack as well. Um, I think, and I'd like to hope that the community do some extra bits to it, maybe do some sound mods and pull the packs over, or if AP can do the stuff, it'd be nice. Um, if this is something that takes your fancy, so if you like HST, then this will be good for you. Um, to be quite fair, I, I don't do a lot of HST driving, but I can, I, I can see myself enjoying this. Um, I think I'll enjoy it more with better sounds, don't get me wrong. That angel wrestle is a bit weird then, on the warning. I don't think it usually it would go bing when you've cancelled the warning. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm most certain that shouldn't happen. That's maybe a bit of a, a bug. Um, yeah, I think I, if, you, if you're into HSTs, then this is definitely a pack for you. Nevertheless, all the way around, so it's got all around on them. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it. It's definitely not the worst pack to come from DTG as of recent. I'm speeding here, by the way. Bad. Um, some good old pacers there, pacer fans. I mean, their modelling terms of things are coming really, really well now. I'm wondering as well, obviously, we've seen this come from Trains and World. Is that Class 142 that came recently going to go into Trains and World? Because the modelling on that was really good. I think Trains and World will see a 142 at some point in the future. I really do. So that that modelling quality is just working right up with that. All the detail of the and this is well, you can see it, you can see it's called Trains of so you can just tell. if it has that
maybe a little bit sharp. They do sound all right. That sounds fun, man. That, they sound like the uh, problems from the world. The, that's the Mark IV flange sound. Bad brake squeal. That's bad. Oh, I'm not so keen with that bit of sound. Uh, let go back here again because I want to see the door animation. I think we're in the same place. I'm just sort of uh, zoom our way. Again, look at that. You can see the, the joint. Very visible there. You can see straight in there. Press T. So there's a nice animation with the door handles, as you see there. That's good. So. I'm just going to give that a pause. So many potential thumbnails here. <laughs> um, excellent stuff. Overall, it's a, it's a nice pack. It's not bad at all. Um, I've seen worse, definitely. So, yeah, I, I would recommend this if um, anyone wants to get this. I would say get it. Um, hopefully, there'll be some mods and more skins available soon for it. Even maybe some of the specials, special liveries for the uh, the HSTs, what they've run up and down the East, uh, East Coast Main Line. Um, other bits and pieces might, might come from other uh, TLCs. That'd be nice. Um, but yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, the link for it, if you want to purchase it, will be in the description below um, and everything. Um, also, um, Harrogate Loop itself will be moving to its new website very, very shortly. Um, we will have all the information on that, so don't uh, don't worry if you can't find it and you need it. It will be there very soon. Um, we'll pass all the information on that on our upcoming streams. Um, massive thanks to you all. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've been Tom. That's been Trains from TV. Don't forget you can like, share, subscribe. Any feedback or anything like that. Any any comments that you have towards this pack, um, do uh, do keep them friendly, of course. Um, try not to get into arguments and wars. Um, you can get in touch with us and we'll uh, have a read of them. Um, massive thanks again, guys. Don't forget Twitch. Um, you can catch us on there. Twitch.tv forward slash Trains from TV underscore Tom and Trains from TV underscore Mark. Tom's channel is the one that's usually live. Um, Tuesdays and Saturdays from 8 p.m. onwards uh, into the night, doing various bits and pieces, route building, driving, and all that. Lot. Going through occasional red signals as you do. Um, excellent stuff. Thank you very much for watching, guys. We will catch you on the next video. Take care for now and stay safe.